Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am back to do a new Release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that are coming out on Tuesday, November 12th. The first book I have this week is The Innocents by Michael Crummy. A brother and a sister are orphaned in an island cove on Newfoundland's northern coastline. Their home is a stretch of a rocky shore governed by the feral ocean. Still children with the barest notion of the outside world, they have nothing but the family's boat and the little information haphazardly passed on to them by their mother and father. Muddling through the severe round of the seasons, it's their fierce loyalty that motivates them and sustains them. But as seasons pass and they wade into the mysteries of their own nature, even that loyalty will be tested. So this is a new literary fiction book that's been getting a lot of rave reviews from a lot of people, including Emma Donoghue, Kevin Powers, and Ron Rash. Um, it's a book about survival, about the relationship and bond between a brother and a sister, about the limits of human endurance, and about their capacity for loyalty and forgiveness. And again, that's called The Innocence by Michael Crummy. Next, I have Queen of the Conquered by Kaysen Callender. Sigourney Rose is the only surviving daughter of a noble lineage on the island of Hans Lolik. When she was a child, her family was murdered by the island's colonizers, who have massacred and enslaved generations of her people. And now Sigourney is ready to exact her revenge. When the childless king of the islands announces that he is going to elect his successor from the eligible noble families, Sigourney uses her ability to read and control minds in order to manipulate her way onto the royal island and into the ranks of the ruling colonizers. But when she arrives prepared to fight for control of the islands, Sigourney realizes that she is the target of a dangerous and no magic. Someone is killing off the ruling families in order to clear a way to the throne. As the bodies pile up and all eyes regard her with suspicion, Sigourney must find allies amongst her prey and the murderer amongst her peers lest she become the next victim. So this is a new fantasy book. It sounds super interesting. It looks like it deals with a lot of power and privilege as well as family dynamics as well as like larger topics like colonialism and things like that. It's being described as for fans of S.A. Chakrapotra as well as Ken Liu. So if you are a fan of the fantasy worlds that those authors have created, this is probably another book that you should have on your list. And again, that's called Queen of the Conquered. Next, I have Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher. Jack Nolan is a gentleman, a journalist, and unlucky in love. His viral success has pigeonholed him as the how-to guy for his buzzy internet media company instead of covering hard-hitting politics like he wants. Fed up with fluffy articles, he strikes up a deal with his boss for a final piece de resistance. How to Lose a Girl. Easier said than done when the girl he meets is Hannah Mayfield, and he's not so sure that he wants her to dump him. Hannah is a very successful event planner who's focused on climbing her career ladder, but Hannah has a little bit of an image problem. She needs to show her boss that she has range, including the dreaded romantic weddings. Enter Jack. He's the perfect man to date to prove to her boss that she's not afraid of feelings. So if this plot sounds a little bit familiar, this is a new modern twist on How to Lose a Guy in 10 days. I love that movie a whole lot when it first came out. Uh, so this is definitely a book that I've had on my radar and it sounds like one that other people who like contemporary romantic or contemporary rom-coms, things like that, should definitely have on their list. And again, that's called Not the Girl You Marry and that is out today. Next, I have Mama Hissa's Mice and this is by Saud al -Sud. Nusi, and this is translated by Sawad Hussein. Growing up together in the Sura region of Kuwait, Katuk, Fad, and Sadiq share neither ethnic origin nor religious backgrounds, only friendship and rage at the unconscionable divide turning their lives into war zone rubble. To lay bare the ugly truth, they form the protest group Fwada's Kids. Their righteous transgressions, though, have made them the target of both Sunni and Shia extremists. They've also elicited the concern of Fad's grandmother, Mama Hissa. A story-spinning font of piety, wisdom, superstition, and dire warnings who warn them that should they anger God, the sky will surely fall. Then one day, after an attack on his neighborhood leaves him injured, Katuk wakes up and his friends are nowhere to be found. Inundated with memories of his past, Katuk begins to search for them in a world that seems unrecognizable but not forsaken. So this is a book that won the International Prize for Arabic Fiction that has recently been translated into English. It is both an apocalyptic as well as a 
funny novel looking at friendship in a war-torn world, but it also speaks to the universal struggle of finding one's identity and figuring out a reason to go on even after the sky has fallen. And again, that's called Mama Hissa's Mice. Next up, I have Raven Lane by Amber Cowie. Esme and Benedict Werner have an idyllic life in a tight-knit community until an accident in their cul-de-sac ends in the tragic death of one of their dearest neighbors. After eyewitness accounts morph into contradictory memories, suspicions, and unaccountable accusations, Benedict is arrested. Esme's life, too, is forever changed. As the neighborhood largely turns against her and her family, Esme has time to think about her past and what she's going to do next. Then, her fellow residents start to look even deeper, questioning one another and themselves about hidden lies and betrayals. So this is a new domestic thriller that has kind of like a vague synopsis I think on purpose. A lot of the blurbs on this book describe it as like an unputdownable suburb of the nightmare or a page turning thriller and things like that. So if you are a fan of those types of books, this should definitely be one that's on your list. And again, that's called Raven Lane. And the final book I have this week is a nonfiction book. It's called Secondhand Travels in the New Global Garage Sale by Adam Minter. Downsizing, decluttering, a parent's death. Sooner or later, all of us are faced with things we no longer want or need. But when we drop off off our clothes or other items at a donation center, where exactly do they go? Sometimes across the country or even across the world where people take value in the things that we choose to leave behind. So in this new book, Adam Minter is taking us into the often hidden multi-billion dollar industry of reuse. From thrift stores in the American Southwest to vintage shops in Tokyo, flea markets in Southeast Asia to used goods empires in Ghana. Along the way, Minter meets some fascinating people who are often in charge of and profit from our rising tide of discarded stuff. And he also asks a pressing question. In a world obsessed with shiny and new, is there space for it all? So this sounds like a really interesting nonfiction book, obviously like decluttering and minimalism and stuff like that has been like a growing trend or at least a growing idea here in the United States. And there's sort of this like unattended consequence of that of like people getting rid of a lot of stuff, but then it's sort of like what happens to all of that stuff that we've been getting rid of. This book is going to explore things like why we keep buying more stuff, marketing practices and design failures that go into that, and even racial prejudices that pushes all of our stuff into landfills as opposed to other people's homes, and how creating a sustainable future, which is a goal for a lot of people, really means a shift in how we think of excess and stuff and what we're doing with all of this. So again, that's called Secondhand and you can pick that up today. So that is everything I have for you guys this week. Let me know down in the comments below what books you guys are excited about picking up, whether it's one of these or another one that I didn't mention here today. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye!